Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Loving it. So, so, so it. if you're loving, loving it, you can't get enough of it. Then put the hand up high, right where the other is. Other is. Other is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You getting it right now with Mr. Yeah, Morfacado. Right DJ Morphosis. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know you loving it. And if you loving it, you can't get enough of it. Put a hand high, right where the other is. Sit a week, but can't find a quitter in me. It's that bit of sweet literature, that Lydia Street. Walk with the Prince of Peace, see where these footprints lead. Keep my eyes to the sky, looking for signs of a thief. Breathe a sigh of relief, it ain't my time to leave. So many people's ain't saved, I didn't even raise my seat. The price paid wasn't cheap, my life's like a receipt. Recurrent theme, Christ redeems, and I would agree. With difficulties seem to be at a greater degree. I'm saying, Greater is he whose favors on me than he who's under my feet every day of the week. Exiling, stay on the beat like I'm the police. Might even make it the chief man. So here we are. We're getting ready to preach. Brother Anthony's preparing his sermon. We got another brother's going to get up on the platform and preach with us tonight. Preach with us, Brother John Wheeler. We're over here at the uh, Memphis and May uh, uh, Bill Street Music Festival. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, share the gospel with as many as we can. We've met a few uh, Calvinist preachers along the way with their banners up. And uh, appreciate that you're trying to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, but we're out trying to uh, just to try to preach the gospel and to uh, just turn the sinners from their way and bring them to you. My pen hits the paper and connects like blue. Says this: that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Pastor, God's love is not strong enough. That's right. God's love is not strong enough. If it was strong enough, then he, he would, he, we'd all be saved. We'd all be on our way to heaven. Jesus Christ would not have had to come and, and die on the cross. You say, Pastor, love, that is, that is stronger than that of the love of God. Well, I tell you, what's stronger than that of the love of God? What's stronger? As the book of Hebrews says, Hebrews says this, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. People say, well, Pastor, I'm a, I'm a pretty good old boy. I'm not as bad as some. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not as good as some. I'm not as bad as most. I'm pretty good. And so I, I believe that, I believe that God will let me into his heaven. I believe that God will let me into his heaven. And they, and they base that off of self-righteousness because they're pretty good old boy. That God understands. That God understands their heart. But I'm here to tell you tonight that it's not about your good works. That's legalism. It's not about your good works that you do. Or how great that you are and the shirt that you might have gave someone off of your back. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin.
I'm wishing tonight that some preacher would have reached out just a little bit harder. Come on, and maybe she would still be here with me tonight. Come on. And saying, oh, so your wife died. I'm saying that's right. I was married 20 years to a beautiful woman. Come on. She had my three sons. John Paul, Jacob, and Benjamin Wheeler. We lived a life that a family is supposed to live. We come to Memphis as a family. Walked on these very streets with my wife holding my hand. And just like many of you tonight, I stepped in the clubs with my wife. I danced with her. I drank with her. And the whole time I knew these things wasn't right. But you know, it wasn't just alcohol, but a little bit later on, it was prescription drugs that come into play. I'm talking about Xanax, hydrocodone, mind-altering drugs. These things are addictive tonight. And these doctors, a lot of times, are telling you lies. It's a money racket to bring in your money. They don't care about you tonight. But I'm going to tell you, in July of 2012, I was sitting in a jail cell, handcuffs on my wrist, shackles on my ankles. And my brother come to that jail cell. And my wife had been arrested for public intoxication, too. So I asked my brother, I said, how are my children? He said, your, your boys are fine. And I said, did more charges show up on me? He said, no. I said, you give me a lawyer? He said, no. I'm thinking to myself, well, why are you here? And I asked him, I said, what about baby? And my brother put his head on my shoulder. And he said, John, she's no longer with us. My wife of 20 years died in a jail cell because she was addicted to prescription drugs and alcohol. So that's why I'm here tonight. Because I want to tell you tonight that there's another option. You got another option tonight. You don't have to take that drink of alcohol. You don't have to smoke that dope. You don't have to take them needles in your veins. You got to have a better way here tonight. I'm talking about Jesus. He went to a cross tonight. He went to a cross and died for my sins, your sins, and the sins of everybody on these streets. So would you come into him tonight and give your heart to him? Well, I, I prefer the warmth of hell. Like one day, you understand that? I want you to understand that it wasn't just a fairy tale. It was the truth. It was something he created here for the devil and his angels. That's who he created it for. He created it for the devil and his angels. But if you do not live... We want you to understand and hear the truth. We want you to understand the truth that you may have grew up hearing but you may have just taken it as a little fairy tale. It's something that, living in the South, you've probably heard your grandmother or mother or somebody talk about, and that's Jesus Christ. But we're out here this, this evening to tell you the truth about Jesus Christ. We want you to understand that it's not a fairy tale. It's not a Sunday school lesson. Jesus Christ is a real man, or he was a real man. Now he's up there with the Father, and I want you to understand about Jesus Christ. Not only do I want you to understand that Jesus Christ was real, I want you to understand tonight why, why each and every one of you needs Jesus Christ. I needed him in my life. I had to accept Jesus Christ, and I repented of my ways. I want you guys to accept Jesus Christ. But I don't want you to just take him for some, you know, for some tree-hugging hippie idea of a Jesus. I want you to understand the truth about Jesus. The truth about Jesus is this, that God is a judge according to the scripture. Scripture says he's a wrathful God. Scripture says he's a righteous God. The scripture says that each and every one of us has an appointed time to die. And when we die, comes the judgment. 
And that's when we will stand before God and He will judge us. And a lot of people have it in their heart that God is love. And I want you to understand that, yes, God is love. That's why He gave you Jesus. But you need to understand the fullness of God and that it, that is that He's a wrathful God. And if you do not serve Him and you do not follow God and follow His commandments, you'll find yourselves looking up from the pits of hell. And a lot of you out here will think that you're good enough to make it into heaven and, and that you're not bad enough to go to hell. But I want you to understand you're badly mistaken. You'll not be judged according to somebody else. He's not going to judge you according to the other, the bad people, the good people. He's not going to judge you according to your heart. He's going to judge you according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ loves you. And he wants you to be in heaven, but he knows that God is going to judge you and send you to one of two destinations. God will ever send you into heaven to be where he has prepared a mansion for you, where there will be no more pain or suffering or tears or death. Or he will send you into a place of eternal death, hellfire and damnation, and that is called hell. A place that he did not create for you, he created it for the devil and his angels. That's who he created it for. He created it for the devil and his angels. But if you do not live according to the way he wants you to live, according to the to the Bible, according to the word of God, then you'll find yourself there. When you stand before God, he'll look in, a, in, in the book and he'll, 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 the scripture says that every tongue will confess and every knee will bow before him. And you'll have to give an account for everything you've done here. You have to give an account and he will judge you. And he will send you to heaven or hell, but oh, thank God that he loved you enough that he sent his son, Jesus Christ. He sent a sacrifice for you, a representative. Now, that's what the fairy tale that you were taught growing up was about. But I want you to understand that it wasn't just a fairy tale. It was the truth. It was something that you need to understand. Every one of us out here knows that you're going to die. You can't deny that fact. And somebody will say, well, that, you know, I don't believe in faith. I don't, I don't believe in this faith thing. You know, I'm not going to believe in anything that I can't see or touch or, or prove scientifically. Well, I, I prefer what you the can't warmth prove. of hell. You're like going to die flag. one day. You understand That's that, right? Fair. You know that fair. you're going to die. How do you know that you're going to die? Can you prove it? No, you can't prove it because the time when you try to prove it is too late. It's too late. You'll have faith then. Your faith will truly be granted then when you stand before God because you got to that moment of death and you'll stand before him and he will judge you. But oh, thank God that he gave his son Jesus Christ and Jesus will come over and he will represent you before God and he'll say, hold it not to their charge because I died for their sins. And Jesus Christ will stand there for you. But I want you to understand something. Some of you might call yourselves Christians. You might go to church on Wednesday and Sunday, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing to go to church. I'm just saying this. That's not enough to get you into heaven. And a lot of you might have said a little prayer when you were a child, but I'm going to tell you, that prayer does nothing. That prayer does nothing if you do not truly accept Jesus Christ and do what John the Baptist said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And do what Jesus Christ himself said, and that is repent. Turn from your wicked ways. The scripture says that when you accept Jesus Christ in, in your heart, he will write your name in the book. And when you stand before him, if he finds your name there, he'll allow you to go into the kingdom of heaven. Many of you might have been what you called saved at one time in your life. You might have been what you thought was saved. And now you're out doing all kinds of things that you know the scripture says is horrible. Sleeping around or, or doing different things that you know you shouldn't be doing. And if you're at that point, you need to understand the scripture says that he could blot your name out of the book of life. He could take your name out of there. He could blot it out. So if you said that little prayer when you were younger, it may not stand up anymore if you're not living according to his word. The scripture says for us not to take the grace of God in vain. We're not supposed to prefer here to help you understand that Jesus Christ loves you and he wants, you to, wants to dwell with you. The scripture says that your body is his temple. The scripture says that God will dwell inside your body, inside your heart when you accept Jesus Christ. And he doesn't want you to pollute that temple. He doesn't want you to pervert that temple. He doesn't want you to welcome other individuals into that temple. He wants to be, he wants it to be you and him and whatever mate he's called you for. That one person that you marry. 
And guys, you need to understand that one person that he's called you to marry is going to be a woman. And women, you need to understand the one person that he's got called for you is going to be a man. That's the way God set it up. Now, many people will pervert the gospel and say, wait a minute, I was born this way. On, well, I'm going to just talk to you about that for just a minute because I was born a man. And I will tell you, I think women are beautiful. But he didn't make me go sleep around with every one of them that I thought was attractive. He gave me a wife, and I will stand true to my wife. He wants me to be with my wife, and he wants you to be with the one he called you for. What many of you say God, God created you as is sin. And no, yes, you were born in the flesh, but he did not, he did not uh, uh, allow you to be born to live in sin. He wanted you to be born to serve him, to follow him, to love him, to fellowship with him, and to come into the kingdom of heaven with him. That's the way he created it. He wants you there with him. You need to recognize that this life that you say and you say, I want to live my life, I want you to understand it's not your life. Amen. You're living on borrowed time. This time that you have, that you call your life, it's just the time that God, that God put on the timeline for you to be born, to live according to live that life, and then that life will end. But that life you live is not yours. It's God's life. And if you do not live that life for Him, He will give you what the Scripture calls eternal death. And eternal death is when you find yourself in hell, a place where it says the fire will never stop and, and the worms die not and the flames will not quench, a place of willing and gnashing of teeth. I want to also tell you guys this afternoon that many of you guys may call yourselves Christian. I need you to understand this fact too. You know what it means about those will, that wailing and gnashing of teeth? It means if you believe in Jesus Christ and you accepted him in your heart or you call yourself a Christian and you're leading others to drink and do things that the Bible said is wrong and you teach them to do so or you help them do that, you're just as guilty. And you're going to bring them down into hell with you. You're going to be judged according to that. So don't take anybody down with you. Live your life holy and acceptable unto the Lord because He wants you to be there with Him. I want you to understand that, yes, God is love. He truly is. John 3.16, I'm sure we've all heard it, says, For He loved you so much that He gave His only begotten Son. That if you believe in Him, you should be saved and not perish. But you need to understand something. That you have to accept Him. And you have to believe. And the Scripture says that you should be saved. Not that you will. You have to accept Jesus Christ in your heart. Repent of your ways. And accept Him. I don't, want, I don't want any of you guys to stand before God. I will tell you there's one thing that I fear in my life. One thing. And that only fear I have is my God. I'm, I'm petrified. The scripture says that he is a terrible God. The scripture says he's an awesome God. A God that inspires, inspires all. Amen. And I want you to understand that God is a terrible God. And that when you stand before him, he is going to judge you. He cast his, all his, cast his very own angels out of heaven. Those angels that he created, he cast them out. He cast out his right hand, his right hand angel, Lucifer, who did the praise and worship for him. He cast him out. And if he cast out Lucifer, why do you think that he will not send you to hell? Why do you think he won't cast you out? I want you to understand that God will. He will judge you according to, to his word. But I want you to understand this too, that he loves you. And he gave you his son, Jesus Christ. And if you will believe in Jesus Christ and stop doing what you're doing and stop living the life that you're living and stop polluting the life that he's granted to you and claiming it as your own and start living it as his life, that long time that he gave you and live according to him, it says he will give you eternal life. All of us might have 10, 15, 20, 30, 70 years that God has put on that timeline. Maybe we have that much time. But the scripture says if we will serve him and accept Jesus Christ, that will give us eternal life, a life that never ends. The scripture says that this life is just a moment, just a twinkle of an eye. This life will end. It seems like it's, it's a long life, but you may go out, you may go out tonight. And if you die tonight, that thing that you call your life is over. Won't be anymore. You'll find yourself in hell, which is called eternal death. But you can have eternal life through Jesus Christ. 
We have a couple of preachers over here. If anybody wants to come speak to us, we'll be glad to talk to you. I'm going to go ahead and pray at this time. And then my pastor, Anthony Love, is going to come speak. Heavenly Father, I pray that all those that heard the sound of my voice accept the message this, this evening. God, we do this not for ourselves. We do this for them. So let them accept, Heavenly Father, that we're not out here to be seen. We just want them to hear the story and the truth of Jesus Christ. God, we just want them.